So this is the Foam Posit Nike Vapor 10. It was never officially released. There were so many rumors about this shoe and it was being made. And then all of a sudden it was just kind of quietly dumped onto a bunch of discount department stores. Now people have a lot of theories as to why this shoe was never released. A lot of people think it's because it was made for Federer and then him and Nike kind of had the fallout and they just decided not to go along with the lineup. Well, when I got these shoes to review, put them on my foot, I think I found the answer to why they were never released officially. They're just not good. Hey everybody, it's Zach, your YouTube foot doctor, and today I'm cutting open the Foam Posit Nike Vapor 10. This is a really interesting shoe, as Foam Posit is a pretty old school technology. It was revolutionary for the time in the late 90s, and we're still making basketball, and apparently now tennis shoes, with this technology. Now, Foam Posit is a really, really interesting method of making an upper of a shoe. What it basically is, is it's polyurethane. It's actually melted to such a high degree that they can then form it in these really interesting shapes. Now the foam posits on the basketball as well as on the tennis vapor 10 here is actually designed after the shape of a beetle to make it a little more aerodynamic. Now what they say about foam posit is that it is so much stronger than a regular upper because of the process to which they mold that polyurethane upper. It's also supposed to be a lot more glove-like fitting so when you put it on that almost liquid rubber that it has kind of sucks down around your foot which is great if you have a narrower foot however as we'll see later if you have a wider foot ugh. Not only does this liquid polyurethane foam posit mold around your foot really aggressively, it also holds on to heat really aggressively. As we see on the infrared test, these shoes can really trap some heat. Now, what else is really interesting about the upper besides the liquid polyurethane is actually the slipper tongue. So it is another booty tongue, just like the Vapor 10 knit. However, it almost looks like chain mail that a knight would wear. And now, unlike the Vapor 10 knit, which kind of allowed a little bit of heel slippage, but was comfortable, these don't allow any heel slippage, but they're really uncomfortable. They're kind of unyielding. They kind of dig into your foot. And that chain mail kind of does translate onto your foot because it's just not comfortable. Now on the midsole teardown, you'll see exact same specs as the Vapor 10 and Vapor 10 knit. Got the same midsole construction and same heel to toe drop and stack height. And even though the foam posits are quite a bit heavier than the original Vapor 10s and Air Max 95s, really similar surf height measurements just shows you it's really the midsole and shank doing the work there. But the outsoles on these is where these shoes really start to veer off the track again. As you can see, same aggro crag patterns, same integrated shank. However, it is that clear rubber. And as we know, that clear rubber just does not grip as well on a hardcore. And as you can see on the suicide test, I am just slipping and sliding everywhere. Could not get a lot of traction. So even though these shoes may be a little more aerodynamic, it doesn't really matter if you can't grip the court. Now the fit of the foam posits as compared to the original Vapor 10 and Knit could not be more different, whereas those shoes will expand a little bit for a wider foot, they're a little more forgiving. These are not, these shoes are unyielding. Now if you have a more narrow foot and you want something a little more of a glove-like fit, yeah, these are great. However, if your foot is even a little bit medium to even wide, these shoes just aren't gonna break in. I played with these three times and over the three times I played over the two hours each session, I could not break them in after 15 minutes. My feet were absolutely killing me, especially on the outside of my foot and there was really nothing I could do to stop that. I put tennis balls in them, old socks, just really tried to expand them, just tried to manually pull them out. Just wasn't happening. These shoes are just not made for anybody but a narrow foot. But interestingly enough, because the foam posit is so strong, these shoes just don't pronate as much as the original Vapor 10s. So even though these won't fit a wider, flatter foot, they will still hold up your arch much better than the original Vapor 10s will. Upper durability test with a Dremel 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper. It did rip right through that real sheer layer on the outside, right through to that liquid polyurethane. So that blue material, although it does look strong, it will not really resist a lot of abrasion. Now outsole durability test with a Dremel, 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper. That clear rubber outsole, barely a millimeter of damage. So it's actually a better durability profile than the original Vapor 10s. However, they just don't grip as well. Now playing in the foam posits was just really disappointing because I really couldn't appreciate all the functional engineering that goes into foam posit technology because I was just trying to not slip and slide everywhere and I was worried about pulling a calf or a hamstring muscle on them. And I wasn't paying attention to that, I was just paying attention to how much they hurt my foot. And that was disappointing because I do think foam posit does have a place on the tennis court. Now with these shoes, I think somebody has a narrower foot that plays on clay. I do think these would be really good because the uppers are so strong. So if you're a really aggressive mover and you're doing the splits and you're kind of on one foot or off balance, these uppers are gonna hold your foot a lot stronger than the original Vapor 10s and just a lot of other uppers on other shoes in general. Now also these treads on clay, they'll grip just fine. It's just hard courts they have a hard time with. So if you are playing on clay, have a narrow foot and you're a really aggressive mover, aggressive 
aggressive slider. These shoes are going to work. I think if they could just, number one, get rid of that clear outsole. Number two, make that foam positive just a little wider, just a little more forgiving. I know the whole thing is that it molds around your foot, but they are kind of alienating a lot of players with this. I think if they can workshop that, I do think that these shoes do have a huge place in tennis. And if I had to describe the foam posits in one hyphenated word, it would just be swing and a miss, just because they really did swing for the fences in these shoes, and I really think that they were this close to having such an elite shoe, but just with some weird design choices, this shoe went from being a game changer just to a shoe that kind of belongs in a discount department store. But of course, I'd love to know your thoughts on foam posit technology. Have you tried them out in Nike's basketball shoes, and kind of what have your experiences been with them? And if you learned something in this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to see the brand new Vapor Pro, make sure you click the link up here to check out that video as well. Otherwise, hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. See you next time.